<laughs> um, but I'm going to discuss some things that I've tried in live lessons, what's worked well, um, and also using Microsoft Forms. So apologies for the amount of writing on this slide, but these are the things that I've tried so far. Um, so I've had four of my lessons with the Year 10 Girls Grammar Stream so far. Um, I've scheduled them through Teams, but I've used emails, showing my homework comments and calls as reminders to try and get as many of them as possible on there. Uh, last Thursday, I had 26 out of 32, so we're getting there. And I have spoken to all of those who didn't arrive and they've, they've promised me they'll be there this week. Um, I have made sure to greet every student as they've arrived, keeping a register of attendance as well, just to kind of keep that normality exactly the same as I would at the door with them normally in a, in a classroom. Um, I've made sure to cover the ground rules at the start of the lesson, so things like that they don't have to have their videos on. If they are, then it's not a big deal. Um, they have to have their microphones muted and they can only unmute them once I ask them to, once I invite them to, and how to use the chat function effectively. And making sure that I'm starting as quickly and as promptly as possible because I value their time and I have given them, I've said to them that we can have that chat and that catch up at the end of the lesson because that's when those that maybe don't want to stay for that bit, they can obviously leave then. They've mainly been feedback lessons. We've looked at GCSE papers that they've been working on through the week. Um, I've used Microsoft Forms to collate feedback about the questions to focus on. I've included some independent practice, which I'll go through in a second. The chat function has been great for me to gather feedback and understanding. Um, and just keeping it positive, praising excellent work and showing them that I'm really happy to see them. I'm happy to be there. They're happy to be there generally. It's been a really positive experience. Um, and the final thing there is having an hour of being immediately available after a lesson. So I've said to them, I'm sat here, I'm at my computer, and I'm literally waiting for your questions. So let me know if you haven't asked a question during the lesson. I'm here, I've got an hour. <clears throat> Some people are advertising them as office hours, but that's worked quite nicely. So the best things for me that have worked uh, really really well is being prepared and being honest with them explaining that we're all still learning this is new for everyone I'm probably going to mess this up we're going to go wrong at some point but that's okay because we're all learning together we're all in it together and I'm only a human um, as I said lots of reminders to try and get them on there my visualizer has been a godsend because I can live model questions with them Using um, questioning from the feedback, so I'm going to go through this again a little bit more in a second, but um, before I realised that there was something called polls, I just asked the girls to send me either a yes or a no response in the chat as to whether they understood something just for that instant like, whole class feedback. Um, and that was really great because then I could, they were able to ask for clarity if there was a specific point in the question that they didn't understand um, and I could then ask them to unmute to question and scaffold them back up to an answer exactly the same as I would do in a classroom. Um, as I said I'll show you again in a second with the I do we do, do style questions but that's been really really great again it's just a reflection of what we do in the classroom anyway. Being a class has been lovely and I know that they've really appreciated it because they just keep asking for more and the Microsoft forms have been really useful so that's what I'm going to go through now. So forms are, it's a Microsoft package and the best way to get through it is just through your Office 365 page, but you can create a form through your team page as well. There's an option at the bottom. When you create a form, you get a page that looks like this. So um, you can create a form or a quiz. These are some of the forms that I've got so far. I've colour coded mine and I've got, so starter mats are in orange, the pre forms are in green and the plenary there is in pink. Um, just because that's me. <laughs> when you create a question, you have um, the, the different options of what kind of question. So a multiple choice, a text question, so they can write a full a full answer in there. They can rate things. You can use stars and numbers, um, dates. There's more options in the drop down there as well. Um, but the uh, one thing that's really really nice is that once you've created previous forms, it's it's really really intuitive and brings that thought, uh, like previous questions through. So it's so quick to create. So when I created my live lesson preform for this week, I already had all of my questions from last week there and I could just click add, 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 and it was so quick. Um, something else that's, that I think is quite cool is that when you start writing a question, so if it starts with have or did, it comes up with 
the suggested options of yes, no, or maybe. Again, makes it super, super quick. You just click add all and it's done for you. Or if you have a question that has an answer of easy or something like that, then it again, it will, it will offer another option of challenging. Or if you say sad, it will offer you happy or angry. And it is really, really clever. Uh, you can also add either a image or a video as your question, which is, again, going to be really, really helpful for me. I've used that in my starter mats because I need to put tables in for questions. Uh, you can have videos so that you they have to watch a video and then answer questions about that afterwards. But there's loads that you can put into it. The easiest way to share a form is on the top right hand screen of the screen, you have a share button. The default is um, just a link that you copy and then you can paste that into either an email, onto Show My Homework, onto your Teams page. You can basically send them that anyway, uh, at any, however you like. The second option there is a QR code, which I'm not particularly au fait with myself, but some people might know how to use that. Um, you can also embed it into a website. You can email it directly as well, but you would need to change your default email settings because just to make sure it doesn't come from your personal email. And there's further settings that you can change with things like getting email notifications when you get a response in. You can shuffle the questions around randomly for different um, respondents. You can do all sorts of things like that. So these are some of the questions that I had in my pre-lesson form. So I asked them what their scores were, I asked them which questions they found the hardest, uh, which questions they'd like me to go through, and just um, some general questions at the end about what they want our live lessons to look like, because I, I want to know what's useful for them. Um, so that was really, I'll show you some of their responses in a second. So once you've created the form, you can see at the top there you have either a questions or responses tab, and this is live. So I had this open during the lesson as well because some of them hadn't quite worked out how to use it yet. So I was still getting responses in during the lesson, uh, but it's it just puts it all into, into this results page for you. You have, so I've got a graph here which is just showing their scores from paper one, but it, again, it uses its own intuition or whatever you call it, that it, it creates whatever graph is most relevant for the data that it's bringing you. So it does uh, bar charts, pie charts, line graphs. It's great from a maths point of view. You can also then look at the answers in more detail. So these are some of the answers I had about which was the hardest question in paper one for them. So I could see really quickly that, OK, 27 was a question that I definitely needed to go through. I could see that 18 was one to focus on. Um, and again, it just gave me that really quick feedback of how to structure that lesson in the most impactful way for them. Uh, so these are some of the other responses that I had about how they could access Teams. I just thought you might like to see a pie chart. Um, and some of the responses that I had about what they wanted to see in live lessons. So uh, they're good the way they are, which was nice to see, just like actual lessons. And they just wanted that um, structure that they're so used to in, for the most part. Um, some people will be super happy to see there's an Excel spreadsheet there, but you can go into each person's response individually. So, oh, that's Siri, sorry. <laughs> um, you can go through each, I've completely lost my track of thought now. Um, each respondent's question aren't their answers, so you can see person by person. It gives you these insights itself. So, for example, on the right hand side there, you can see that of the 39% of people that answered 61 to 80% in question two, 100% of them also had that same score band in question one. So it gives you these little things that come through like that. And it's super easy to export the whole thing into Excel. It's literally just a button and it comes up straight away and then you can play around with data to your heart's content and make all sorts of lovely diagrams and graphs. Um, so this is a snapshot of how I did an I do, we do question. These are, this is the girls looking really, really interested as I went through a loci question that they'd asked about. Um, so I'm modeling it there under my visualizer. They're watching and taking notes. And then I had a pre-prepared example for them to practice that skill exactly the same as I would do in a classroom. So I gave them two minutes of me sat quietly um, and the chat function was open so they could ask questions. They could check back on, on what they're doing, where they're starting um, for them to do on paper themselves. And that's something that I want to do a little bit more of. But again, that having that form beforehand meant that I knew exactly which questions to have pre-prepared to chuck at them, basically. Um, 
<clears throat> so you can use forms live in lessons. I haven't done this um, as a reflection of the content that I'm teaching because mine's been more about um, feedback, but I know Lucy's done it in lessons and a couple of other people have as well. It's great for that instant feedback of understanding. Um, so you can have it like a mini quiz, you can have it as a starter or a plenary, and you can have it to, you could use it to plan the next lesson as well. So just to, again, how we would use a plenary in a normal lesson. Another thing you can do is set a form as an assignment. Um, so you can see here, this is just from a screenshot from my Teams page. Um, assignments is one of the tabs at the top and you just create a quiz and it comes up with all of the forms that you previously made. Um, and then you can just set that as a homework. Um, the quizzes, you can, you can make them so they've got the correct answers, so they get instant marking. Um, and there's loads that you can do with it, but it gets created as an assignment. It's set as a homework, you set the date. Um, so that's another thing you can do. And it comes up in the thread in the team discussion as well. So there's loads of stuff you can do there. So this is something that I kind of wish I, I'd known before, but Max showed us how to make polls, which is really, really useful. So I don't know if Max can hear me, if you could pop a poll in the chat now, that would be great to show yeah. an example of it. Yeah. Um, but so you can create an instant poll. So whereas before I was doing the yes or no as to understanding this, um, I created a rag type poll. So I literally, you can do it in the lesson. It's really, really easy, it's really quick. Hopefully you can see one in a minute that Max is making and it's anonymous to them as it goes in. You can go through and ask, find out afterwards who, ans who answered what, um, but just to get that instant whole class feedback of uh, as we would naturally just kind of judge the room a little bit and sort of work out where we where we are. It's another way of doing that. So although it's not on an individual level, we can just say, OK, are they understanding me? Are they not? Are we ready to move on? Do I need to do this again? So I think that's going to be really, really great for us for that instant feedback. And it's a lot quicker than a form. It's just one question. So some other forms features which I think are really, really useful. Um, if you're creating branch, uh, if you're creating a quiz, um, branching is a feature. So you can set it so that if they get that question wrong, it automatically takes them to another question of that type so that they can keep practicing that specific skill until they've got it right. Um, and then obviously those that get it right can go on to the next topic. So you can set it up as like a flow diagram or, almost. Um, you can upload files as questions and as responses. So if for like long written answers, if students have written their work in a Word document, they can upload that document as their response. You can also do it as the question with videos and images. Um, if it's physical work, so if it's um, art or something like that, or written music, they can again take a picture of it and upload it, but they can upload all sorts of different files. You can link it to the class notebook in Teams, which is great again for written responses. There's a maths keyboard, which is great as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, so we can create mathematical equations both in the questions and in the, respon in the responses from them. There is an immersive reader, which is great from an accessibility point of view. So students who need different backgrounds, who need the font size changing, um, they from so for SEN students or anybody that needs has accessibility issues, it, it's got loads of options there. That's also something you can do um, in the chat as well. So for students that want to go back through the chat, it um, transcribes it and you can change all the accessibility settings for them. Um, and you can also add a form into a pre-recorded stream video. So if you are doing the pre-recorded lessons, um, you can have a form embedded into a pre-recorded video and it sort of pauses and starts all automatically. So it's super clever. OK, and lastly, nearly there, um, what I'd like to implement next time. So I have already sent them the pre-lesson form for tomorrow's lesson. I sent that out yesterday. Um, I've set it as an assignment and I've sent them the links to try and get that feedback in as quickly as possible so that I can start planning which lessons I need doing examples for tomorrow. So I want to really do some more of that independent practice. I might use the class notebooks. I'm not sure how they're, well they're going to work with maths at the moment, but um, written subjects, that's going to be amazing for. Polls are definitely going to be something that I use a lot more for that instant whole class feedback. 
Um, and I know that Ellie used a starter mat in her lesson last week, which I hadn't thought about. So I've thought about how I want to have a starter mat with them and I've created a Microsoft form as a starter mat. So these are some of the questions that I've added in, just six questions, the same as I would in a normal maths lesson. And again, it then enables me to go through it exactly the same as I would in a lesson. We can discuss the misconceptions. I've created a multiple choice with potential misconceptions in there already and tables as images and all sorts. So that's my next thing to do. But I think that's it. I think I made it. So yeah. That <laughs> Emma, thank you so much. That was absolutely phenomenal. Um, um, the, one of the questions I had, um, Emma, was you spoke about the I, we stage and, you know, forms and some of the brilliant strategies you've been using there. Have you noticed an impact around like the independent practice and, and for that with your groups? Yeah, so obviously because we're using, um, I, I, I've structured them around the GCSE papers. It's obviously like up to sort of 50 questions that are all different different topics. So it's meant that those questions that have come up that a lot of them have struggled with, I can then give them that independent practice exactly the same as we would do in a lesson that's specific to the skills that they found difficult. Um, some of them are a bit different, more like, I mean, with the loci question that we added up, technically they should have that in front of them. Um, so it can be a little bit difficult to deliver some of that remotely. Um, but I think that's important to have that practice of a skill that they've just seen modelled. Um, so, yeah, I think that's something that I will try and add more of. Great. And um, before I pass over to Mel, um, all, all these, um, uh, the PowerPoints and things, I'll, I'll save them on the GWT files page. Like I was making loads and loads of notes there. So if you're struggling to keep up or whatever, um, I'll save these like last week on the GW teaching page um, and as well as that we are there will be some CPD running next week around uh, live lessons and forms and things so if, if Emma's sort of starts you know lit a fire or, or an idea in your head and you're not quite sure how to implement that um, we are looking to have some CPD running next week around live lessons so um, information will be coming out for that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again, Emma. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, Mel, please. Right, okay, morning, everyone. Um, I just want to kind of start off uh, really talking about the fact that it's quite nervous going to live lessons. Um, I've obviously talked for quite a while and I did feel those kind of nerves and that kind of worry about, well, what happens if it goes wrong? So I really like kind of both Emma and Katie saying just be honest with them and I was there were times when I said look I'm really sorry just give me a few minutes to kind of sort out this technology and I think kind of looking at all the forms and all of those kind of different options out for us um, we can start simple and then kind of step up to those I've certainly kind of listened to the work that Emma's done in forms and use them live and it was amazing but we're kind of all learning and we can all kind of build up to that stage so I think my nerves were there but the minute I kind of started teaching them and they'd all arrived and they're all saying hello and like really nice to see you miss I think that kind of eases and I think that will be a big thing for people is kind of just getting over that first lesson and those nerves so Joe asked me to talk a little bit about questioning and really how that varies with being online as opposed to being in the classroom so kind of the biggest issues for me that I was thinking about were the fact that we don't have those kind of non-verbal clues especially if you don't see them in the video, if they've turned their video off, you can't see their faces. You can't see when they're staring out the window blankly or when they haven't picked up their pen. We can't have that purposeful circulation to browse around and to look at what they're writing. Um, time goes slowly when you've just got kind of a blank screen in front of you. So I found that was an issue when I was saying, right, you've got three minutes now. I'd kind of given them 30 seconds. And because I didn't have that feedback, I was too keen to kind of get started or see and collate their responses. So I kind of really had to think about how long I was giving them to do things. We've got a no hands up policy, but with the chat function, that was really difficult. And I felt to start with, it was almost kind of creating the complete opposite. Um, so thinking about how you can kind of eliminate that kind of hands up and that quick response on the chat to make sure that we're following the kind of the same culture that we do in school 
lurkers were really important to me I had those kind of five or six people that hadn't engaged with me at all on show my homework and I managed to get some of them on the live lesson kind of six turned up and I was really pleased that I'd seen these people for the first time but it was kind of working out how to stop them lurking and how to engage with them and then how to use praise most effectively and like who needed that to make the largest difference in their engagement so first one I want to talk about was that kind of lack of non-verbal clues um, I wanted to decide whether they were ready to move on whether they all understood with the task I didn't have the poll function at that stage so I was kind of going to them in the chat bar and saying does anyone have any questions and things like that and there were kind of the awkward pauses so just really kind of quick tips for you to make sure that that lesson runs smoothly so you can ask them just to type a question mark in the comment box if they want you to go through the instructions again if they need more time again just typing a y in that comment box gave me really really quick feedback um something to be really really conscious of is that there are going to be awkward silences i've had that quite a few times now and i think we just need to stay strong someone will give in before us so if you're asking a question just wait and wait and eventually someone will become brave and kind of switch on their mic and help you out but it is quite nerve-wracking kind of waiting for that to happen mel sorry to interrupt um i don't know if it's just me i can't see your screen i don't know if you're able to to, to share it again please Sorry, Joe. Is that on now? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely great. Thank you. Sorry, I'll have to just click through it all again now. OK, sorry, everyone. Um, the fact that we can't circulate around the room. So I, for my last lesson, asked a couple of people to type up their work. So they've got Rivers booklets that they are using at home but I wanted particularly to do the I do we do you do and have a look at an answer so I made sure kind of on the class page to target two or three people before and ask them in the longer extended answer to actually type it up so we could share it during the youth um, phase so that's worth considering because I think if they're all writing on paper then that makes the kind of sharing element a little bit more difficult um, when you're getting feedback, almost plan which groups you want to hear it from. Quite often, just the same as in the classroom, if you're asking for volunteers, you'll normally get the kind of more able students. So really, it comes down to you knowing your students. If you want an answer that you can unpick that you think is going to be pretty good, who are those students going to be? But equally, making sure you do see kind of a lower student or a middle student so you can gauge that work. So kind of having an idea before you start who you want to have a look at. And then class notebook is something that Emma shared, which I'm really excited about, but I just haven't got around to looking at yet. So I'm hoping when they're typing into their class notebook that I'll be able to go in and see everybody's writing. Again, I've mentioned the fact that the time goes really slowly. So set your timers, have your phone next to you. If you're setting three minutes, put that timer on so you know that it's actually three minutes and have a think about what you're going to do. There's that kind of argument for manning the chat and typing and asking questions of people but I worry slightly about kind of the split attention with that certainly if the chat's kind of flashing at the side of my screen I'm reading that so it's that kind of decision whether that's the most valuable or whether actually you need to kind of leave that chat blank for a while so they can get on with their writing can you challenge them I think that's something that I might try during the six minutes, which will allow me to kind of judge timing much more successfully. So if they're writing a six mark question, I might pick up my pen and write my six mark question as well so they can see what I can produce in the same time. If you're typing it up, mute that mic because there's nothing more distracting than having someone kind of tapping away. You might want to check your form responses from earlier to unpick anything. So I did use um, a form for my kind of starter quiz at the start and those responses came up live and it was amazing being able to unpick those by sharing the graph um, screen with them but also while they're doing a task you might be able to go back into those in a bit more depth and see if there's any problems that you need to go through with them and also just kind of embrace the fact that you've actually managed to get through a part of the lesson without technology or the internet crashing can't click over now um, so the no hands up policy, 
the chat function is great but what i found was that ryan and luke had typed an answer and posted an answer before i'd even kind of finished the question so a lot of other people didn't bother because the answer was already showing or you had some students that just sat there and did wait until everyone else had put their answer because then they could see what the correct answer was so there's that kind of fear of getting it wrong so they'd rather wait so to overcome this what i did was i tried um, to give them the think time I told the students they could type their answer in, but they weren't allowed to press send until a countdown. It also gave me that time to say, right, if you finished your answer, just check, is it good enough for what I would expect? Do you need to elaborate on that? Do you kind of need to give the understanding that goes with that? And then do a countdown to the reveal. And that just meant I got a fairer picture of what everyone thought rather than people having their answers swayed by what was coming up on the chat. Um, I had kind of 33 and then 30 two in my classes and that was really tricky to see who's um, answered and who was opted out so by the time kind of 30 people put their answer in chat you've lost the first answers so that was a little bit tricky and so I guess in my head I knew well maybe actually Sophia or Eve might be the people that struggle so just to decide in your head which names you want to look out for in the chat line and then the polls I think the polls are going to be really useful um, like they say, they're really quick to do. They come up with answers automatically that you can choose if you want to. But again, as we saw with the one that Max did, um, it shows your results live. So that's really um, difficult to kind of make sure you're getting answers that are non-biased. So I think in geography, it would work really well for opinions. But with kind of yes, no answers, the minute 20 people have put yes um, and zero people have put no, it's quite clear what the answer is. So again, I think I would make sure I kind of counted down for that submission. And also to narrate your responses, like we've done in best practice briefings before. So saying, oh, I can see we've got 28 answers. There are still five more people out there to vote to kind of encourage everyone to get involved. Then we've got the lurkers. So like I say, I had my six that I hadn't really had engagement for and show my homework at all. Um, they did join, so more of them were willing to kind of join that live lesson, which was really, really nice. Um, but there were some that don't contribute. And when that chat's going through really rapidly, it's hard to see who you don't kind of have the interaction from. So I tried this second time to predict who. So, OK, so I know I'm probably not going to get much from Sophia. Am I going to get a response from Nick? And I decided kind of which three names I wanted to kind of look for. And I made sure during the chat that I had a look to see if they were submitting answers, which allowed me to kind of call on them by name. And also there was a good bit of blagging it. So it kind of had flicked through. I'd seen lots of answers come in. I didn't know how many people had or had not, but I kind of gave it a cheeky comment. I was like, well, there's still three people who haven't answered yet and kind of gave it that five seconds of awkward silence, which I think kind of encourage people to kind of type answers and I did kind of get another four or so come through and then targeting so like I said I've had these extra people come in and I wanted to make sure I really encouraged the fact that I'd finally had some feedback from them in kind of the closure time so I tried to make sure at the start that I hit that kind of rose and shines 80% success so making sure there were some easy questions at the start that they could be successful so they felt like kind of coming in and joining was beneficial and that they could do it because I think maybe that fear factor that they haven't done enough work or they're not going to be able to do the task is an issue for some of them um, and that also gave me that chance to kind of name and to praise those students I hadn't had things on show my homework from, give them those badges to make sure that it encouraged further participation. And since then, they have been responding to my messages and things. So it's been really great. And an opportunity to target those who have struggled. So I've seen photos of work coming in and I can see which ones kind of haven't been able to get the task or those of them that maybe haven't written as much as they need to so it's a really good opportunity to speak to them in more depth and be able to kind of unpick whether there were big issues or actually whether it was just the fact that they were being a little bit lazy so that was really nice being able to target in the questions um so my final kind of tips is plan your questions it's really different and live teaching has got a lot of stresses attached to it so maybe jot down some questions are you going to do it as a poll do you need to have it as a form 
how are you going to collate the responses? So have a think before you go on and just remove any barriers that might be there for you. Get them to elaborate. The chat bar kind of resorts to text speak and single word answers. And so I've done a lot of challenging of my answers. So Ryan, you've just given me one word. I need that extended. Go back and write it as kind of a KUU format. And I think if you do have nerves, it's worth kind of jotting down some notes and kind of having a script. So you've got it there. I think I did for my first lesson and didn't actually use it. But I think going through that process to start with was really, really helpful for me. Um, but it's really good. I think I just loved seeing them. I think sat at home, you kind of feel a bit empty, a bit frustrated that you're just kind of sat in front of a computer screen. But actually going live with them and have that chat and find out how they're doing and seeing them and they're all super keen to stay around at the end to play their guitars or chat to each other or ask how my children are getting on it was just really lovely so I think they're craving that um, contact with people so yeah it's really nice I think get stuck in that's it Joey amazing Mel thank you so so much um uh, I don't know if anyone has any last questions they want to type in. Um, the things I noted down, that the main thing I took away from, from Kate's was this idea of having a slimmer curriculum or of being realistic in what we're trying to cover and, and feedback with students really resonated with me. Um, I thought Emma's, uh, the, the main idea was uh, using forms for this whole class AFL that, that we took almost for, for granted when we're in front of the students, but, but it's so difficult and so tricky um, it remotely or, or in live lessons, which, which was terrific. Um, and for Mel, something I really loved from Mel's was this idea of um, engaging the lurkers, those sort of quiet students that we all have that we could forget about sometimes um, and planning for those and, and looking to engage them. Um, Final things from me um, in terms of notices. Thank you so much for everyone that's come. Um, I recognise that it's it's been a longer best practice than normal. Um, so thank you so much for attending and thank you again for, for Kate, Mel, Emma, such phenomenal CPD, really, really privileged. Um, and I think it reflects really well on us as, as a school, um, this willingness to, to make the best of a really difficult situation um, in terms of TNL and CPD. So um, really fantastic to see over 70 members of staff attending. Um, like I said before, um, we will save all of these on uh, the GW teaching page um, and information will be coming out about CPD around live lessons and forms if, if you're looking for a bit more guidance on that. If anybody does want to observe any of these live lessons, do look at the timetable shared through uh, Stuart's 